Hi, we are starting a new session in the dividend theory policy and valuation of farm discussions. Today we are going to uh, discuss valuation of stock and valuation of farm under the Walters dividend theory model. This theory is basically a relevant dividend theory. Let's discuss in today's session how Walters think and why he thinks that payment of dividend is relevant for a stock issuing form and how as per this model the payment of dividend is going to affect the stock prices. Let's begin with discussing what's the model and what does it say. The model is basically saying that dividend policies are relevant for a firm if it has issued stocks in the market. It is one of the uh, first theoretical models that has been developed and propounded. James C. Walter says that choosing a proper dividend policy by a stock issuing firm would affect the value of the firm's stock and thereby value of the enterprise. So, so he takes the help of the rate of return required, the cost of capital, the amount of dividend to find out how to maximize the stock prices. The basic premise for this formulation of relevance of dividend theory by Walters is that the stock prices are a reflection of the present value of expected dividend in the long run. So this means all the stock, all the dividends that is expected to be paid in the long run. If you find the present value of all those stock dividends and by adding all those stock dividend present values, you'll be able to find the stock price. Walters assumes that a stock issuing firm will finance the investments solely by retained earnings. This means if new investments are required, the stock issuing firm will not issue new stocks, neither it is going to issue new debts. So the primary assumption is that entire investment of new projects will be undertaken through its own earnings that are not paid as dividends. It also assumes that the internal rate of return and the cost of capital for the firm will remain constant over a long period of time. EPS and the firm's earnings will be either distributed as dividends or they will be retained by the firm. Earnings and dividends will not change and the stock issuing firm obviously has a long and infinite period of life. So we are talking about long term not 2, 3, 5 years. It's a long term investing horizon. Let's see what are the formulation of the model. Uh, even if there are two forms of the model, one is here. <coughs> Excuse me. The other one is here. We have basically this one is easier to understand uh, even if both are uh, primarily the same. Price of a stock P price is dividend divided by KE cost of equity plus R divided by K into E minus D. E stands for EPS. 
and D stands for DPS. So this means this is E minus T whole divided by KE. So two parts, this part and this part. So above formula is also the same, but we are using this one. This is easier to understand. So let's see with the help of an example how the formulation provided by Walters will make us find the stock value. Uh, you can see uh, there are two portions of the valuation formula. The first one is the revenue portion. The second one is the capital gain portion. So stock price calculated can be calculated by taking this formula. We, we have already told you D is DPS, K is cost of equity. P is market price of share or stock price. E is EPS, D is DPS, R is rate of return, K is cost of equity. So basically we need to know what is the E, what is the D, what is the K and what are R. So for example take a farm which is a growth farm. A growth farm is described as a farm which is growing at a higher rate than its cost of equity which means the rate of return on new investments are greater than its cost of equity. So such a farm is generally expected to invest more in new projects, expansions, bringing in new products etc. So this means uh, this farm is expected to uh, invest most of its earning on new investments. So that means if such a farm retains most of the profit after taxes and pays lesser uh, dividends then the value of the farm is expected to be higher. So optimum dividend payout ratio for such a farm would be expected to be zero. Growth farm it might not pay any dividends but uh, the stock prices will be expected to increase because uh, the investors and shareholders and the investing public in general are expecting such a firm to generate high rate of return on new investments and in a long term future. So expected earnings are uh, generally expected to be very high than the cost of equity uh, over a long period of time. That is why the shareholders, the investors are willing to forego the amount of dividend and still expect the stock price to increase. So let's see uh, what about other farms. What if uh, the farm is a normal farm who is earning rate of return equal to cost of equity. This means such a farm only earns uh, as much return on new investments which is equal to its cost of equity. So such a farm uh, is earning only market uh, returns. So this means investing in a new project or not investing in a new project is actually not going to affect the stock prices much. So <clears throat> that means the shareholder uh, will not be uh, very uh, much expectant of higher returns in the long period and therefore the market value of the uh, stock is affected by the payout ratio. But, but generally the stock prices are expected to be deter, uh, remain constant as new projects will not uh, make much of, much of a difference to the uh, cash flows or the rate of return in the near future. What about declining firms? Declining firms are those firms whose, whose rate of return on new projects are less than cost of equity. This means if they invest in a new project they are return for example return from new project is 8% but cost of equity is 10%. So unlike a growth farm whose return is this one is 12 or 14 percentage and which is higher than 10 such farms will have a smaller rate of return on new investments that means shareholders expect that such farms do not pay any amount of retained earnings for reinvestment. Rather, the 
uh, because the growth is uh, going to be very limited in the long term the shareholders expect such firms management to pay lower reinvestment and pay higher dividends so this means optimal dividend policy would be pay 100% dp so that means the stock prices will be highest when e is equal to d earning per share is equal to dividend per share so let's prove all this with the help of a help of an appropriate example taking different uh, r's same e different d's for example uh, suppose say eps of the firm is dollar 10 cost of equity remains constant at 10 percent so we need to find out uh, the market prices under the following rates of return 10 which is equal to uh, the cost of uh, equity 20 which is higher 15 which is higher 7 which is lower dividend payout ratio you can take anything starting from 0 50 75 and 100 so we have to analyze the result uh, for growing farms, normal farms, and uh, declining farms. So you can see here, uh, it says that the EPS is 10. R is different. R we can 10 as 10%. We can also take them as 7%. Or we can take them as 20%, but it also says K is remaining constant at 10% for all cases. DP ratio will be different. DP ratio will be uh, suppose say if payout is 50% because E is equal to $10. Take the first case if R is 15% and payout is 50%. So that means D would be equal to 10 into 0.5 dividend per share is $5. We have taken $5 here divided by 10% into 0.15 that is R divided by KE which is 10% into 10 minus 5. E is 10 and D is 5 divided by 0.10. Stock price is coming to be 125. You can calculate at your pleasure. If R is 15% but we change the payout to 75%. So you can see D becomes 75 like here. 10 into 0.75. D becomes 7.5. If R is 10 and payout is 75, so price is 100. This is 112.5. For 20, 7500, you can see prices are here. You can see uh, if you are paying a dividend of 100%, dividend payout is 100, D is equal to E. If you are paying a uh, dividend payout of 0%, D is 0 because essentially 10 $10 multiplied by 0%. So you can uh, accordingly calculate that D is equal to E into payout ratio. Payout percentage. The rest of the formula remains the same. So we have calculated these. Now we have summarized cost of keep capital remains the same for all so k is equal to 10 percent for all so you can see uh, here r is equal to k so this is a normal form r is 7 percent this is uh, a declining form r is 15 percent this is a growth form R is 20%. This is also a growth form. So 
So one case uh, is a normal form when R is equal to K. So you can write it here, R is equal to K. R is less than K. R is greater than K. R is greater than K. You can see that when R is equal to K, <clears throat> stock prices have remained similar and constant at $100. So whether you pay a 0% dividend, 0 dividend or 5, so payout ratio is 0, 5, 7.5 D and 10. So whether we pay 0 dividend or highest dividend of 10 per share, stock prices are remaining same. So dividend policy doesn't matter for a normal form under Walter's model. But if R is greater than uh, K in both these cases, you can see the lowest dividend brings the highest prices and the stock prices decline as you go on increasing dividend. Because uh, the, for the growth farm, Walter's model was of the opinion that optimal uh, policy is 0% payout. So when you pay the highest dividend, the stock prices are the lowest. And when you pay the lowest dividend, highest stock prices are achieved because uh, here, uh, the investors are in the know that R is much greater than K, so they are going to generate higher return in coming years. So most of the profits have to be capitalized and reinvested. But if R is less than K, the reverse is happy. Reverse is happening. When you pay lesser dividend, the price is lowest. So this means when you pay the highest dividend price is 100. So this means optimal is 100% payout. So three categories. This is indifferent whether you pay any kind of dividend prices are remaining same. If R is less than KE that is a declining firm. The stock prices are highest when you pay the highest dividend. So as you go on increasing the dividend, the stock prices are increasing. For growing farms, if you pay the highest dividend, the prices are lowest. So prices are increasing if you pay less and less. So this means uh, the concept of Walter uh, based on whatever assumptions they have taken. Uh, it is coming true that dividends decisions by the management are relevant and particular stock prices can be maintained by sticking to particular dividend policy decisions. But you need to calculate all these uh, values uh, for that formula. So what I have told you is here if R is KE, which is a normal form, prices are constant, dividend policy really doesn't matter. But if R is greater than KE, which is a growing form, dividend policy should be to pay dividend payout of lowest that maximizes stock prices. If R is less than KE, that's a declining form, dividend should be increased. As you go on increasing dividend, prices are going to be highest. So for a growth farm, remain all earnings, DP should be zero, that increases your stock prices. For a normal farm, DP is irrelevant, how much dividend you are paying does not matter. For a declining farm, you must pay highest amount of distribution of dividend and retain 0% to maximize stock prices. So J, uh, James E. Walter uh, has proved his uh, relevance of dividend uh, through the model that is suggested that optimal payout ratio, optimal stock prices can be achieved by following a particular dividend 
price dividend payout model but there are other methods as well like uh, relevant payout model has also been described by gordon which is a more famous model and also there is irrelevant of uh, dividend policy model which is popularly known as modigliani miller model of dividend policy so in coming sessions we should discuss that but you must uh, go through uh, these um, calculations the assumptions and understand the james walters model so thank you so much for being with me for this session uh, we'll come back uh, with a new session as soon as possible please kindly write to me through this mail subscribe to the channel if you like the video if you want me to make certain changes uh, you can also suggest you can whatsapp me uh, for your needs and please subscribe to the channel thank you very much till the next session bye bye see you soon